The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect those of this station. Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan, a WBKB News public affairs program. Insights deals with the issues affecting those in the community, as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights into Northeast Michigan. Welcome everyone to this edition of Insights. I'm your host, Felina Jones. And on this edition of Insights, we'll be talking about an organization that started right here in Alpena in 2009, whose mission is to help clean up the Great Lakes drug pollutant problem. And Chris Angel is the president of the Great Lakes Water Initiative. Um, and he joins me now to talk a little bit about his organization. Right. Thank you for joining me. Well, yeah, great. Great, thanks for having me. It's 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 uh, good to be here and always to, to share good information and and to let people know that this is something that started right here in Alpena. A lot of people don't believe that when they see it, you know, across the state and in other states. So yeah, we're going to tell that story. Good, thanks for having me. Definitely, thank you for joining me. Um, so your organization, one of the really big things is the Yellow Jug Program. Can yes. You, it's well, actually, that is our primary program. Mm -hmm. We um, the the. The genesis of it was there were a couple of us that worked together and looked at this issue. Mm -hmm. And it was really an emerging issue. It still is, but this was 2008. Uh, started looking at the issue and back then the interesting thing was you hear a bit more about it now, which is great. Right. 2008, trying to do research or mm -hmm. trying to find a place to take your unused, unwanted drugs. Uh, people just weren't doing it. Mm -hmm. And what they were doing, which was causing some emerging problems in the Great Lakes and across the country, was they were told to flush unused, unwanted drugs down the toilet, down the drain. Really, that was policy and practice. Mm. So you could see where that was heading. And really, there was, there, there was not anything. So uh, we decided to put together a group of people to do some research. I did a lot of research. And I tell you, the interesting thing that really got me hooked on it was um, at the federal level. Mm -hmm. you know, of course, there was nothing in the state. There were a few things that were happening in other countries as far as uh, pharmaceutical collection programs right. at pharmacies. And that sort of made some sense. But at a federal level, we can send a man to the moon. We can send a rover to Mars and back. But we couldn't offer anything as far as drug collection mm -hmm. other than mix it with kitty litter or coffee grounds and throw it in your trash. Mm -hmm. We knew there had to be a better way. Right. Yes. And so looking into that, how long was the research process for you guys? I'm going to say it was, it was a good two years. Okay. Um, because uh, actually one of my colleagues you know, brought the issue to us uh, at first. And I consider myself an environmentalist, but a practical, pragmatic environmentalist. You know, if there's a real issue, sometimes issues are uh, uh, maybe uh, they need to be real to me. Mm -hmm. And this was something that I looked at and thought, wow, okay, here's a problem that really is not being addressed. And we can only imagine if we didn't get a handle on it now, what it would be like 20 or 30 years from now. If people continued to do that. Right. So, yes, so it, it took about two years to get it, get it together, develop a, a, a program. Mm -hmm. We had a group of pharmacists uh, here in Alpena that we presented the program to. And the interesting thing, we put so much time into it on the front end, we've changed very little. Mm. We've tweaked a few things, right. but 95% of it is just what we basically put together in 2009, which is good. Great. Right. And so how does the program really work? It, quite simple. Mm -hmm. It has to be simple. It has to be free. And the great thing about it is the pharmacies provide the venue. Mm. You know, there are some programs in different parts of the country where you can take uh, your, your unused unwanted drugs to uh, police stations and whatnot. But we just thought it is so easy to be able to take your stuff to a pharmacy, and that's proven to be great. Pharmacies uh, are great places. People are visiting there on a, on a very regular basis. They're getting their medications there. Right. It makes sense to be able to take their unused, unwanted drugs there. Very they can Very accessible, yes, and they can ask any questions, and they're encouraged to get rid of that stuff they're not using mm -hmm. for safety reasons, for public safety, so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. And pharmacies and pharmacists are so interested in providing that information mm -hmm. and now providing that service. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the venue, all pharmacies, okay. uh, quite simple. Customer walks in, 
Uh, the pharmacist has to look at it. And we'll get to in a second the few things we can't take yet. Mm -hmm. But we'll get okay. into some things that, 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 that we, can, we can help with that. Uh, the pharmacist will look at it because we can't take controlled substances. Those are your narcotics, your painkillers. That law is going to change pretty soon. But right now, we work with a lot of law enforcement agencies where you can, if you have controlled substances, take it to a law enforcement agency right, across course. the state. Mm -hmm. So they look at it. They, the, the pharmacist has... A couple of these, or many of these, depending yellow on jug. the yellow jug. <laughs> yes, people say, "Why the yellow jug?" Yellow jug, old drugs. It, it just sort of worked. We had the container; it made sense. Yellow's a cautionary color. Definitely, it's catchy. It does bring attention, and and it's worked very well. Okay. So they have these. Customer actually, with the help of the pharmacist, will put it right in here. It goes in here. There's some dissolving gel that will dissolve the pills. Okay. It'll absorb the liquids, and uh, so very easy on the customer. End. Uh, they should keep it in its original container so the pharmacist can identify it. Uh, pharmacist fills up one of these, then they start on the next one. And a pharmacy go, may go through anywhere from 2 to 20 or 30, 30 of these mm -hmm. in a collection period. Okay. So there's the yellow jug. Quite Fantastic. simple. Right. Quite simple, free to the customer. <laughs> it has to be simple. It has to be easy. A and it is. But I will tell you, too, very strict protocols about what we, what we, what we can accept, how we pick it up, how we destroy of it. All of this, when it's collected, will go to a high temperature incinerator in Detroit, so okay. it's completely destroyed. destroyed. And we Not weigh it. Into the Great Lakes. Exactly, exactly. And we weigh it when we pick it up, and we weigh it when we destroy it, so we can have checks and balances to show okay. that that's exactly what's happening with it. Right. High temperature incineration, and in fact, the incinerator that we use also produces energy as a byproduct. Okay. So, from an environmental standpoint, we think that's a good thing to do. Okay, definitely. And you mentioned there are some drugs that they won't take besides narcotics. What are those? Um, basically just the, the controlled substances. Okay. There's 260 some controlled substances. Those are their narcotics. So what, what I tell people to do and suggest that they do, go see your pharmacist first. They will be able to tell you out of the 260 some controlled if you have some and they, will, they can tell you then wherever you're at in the state which local law enforcement is able to collect the controlled substances. Okay. Now can we talk about the law that's going to be changing soon? Yeah. yeah. That's actually some really good, good stuff because when we started this program in 2009, we started with pharmacies and some people said, well, why are you doing that if you can't collect controlled substances? Mm -hmm. Well, the pollution stream uh, ratio from countries that have been doing this showed that it would be about 90% non-controlled, 10% controlled substances. So why not start with the 90? Right. We couldn't do anything immediately ourselves mm -hmm. with the help of law enforcement, yes. And law enforcement has stepped up in Alpena, in Northeast Michigan, and really across the state. Five years ago, there were a handful of locations that were collecting controlled substances. Now almost every county has a program like the Yellow Jug Old Drugs right. or where they can collect controlled substances. But the cool thing, mm -hmm. DEA, who is responsible for regulating the collection of controlled substances, came out with revised rules in December. They haven't been adopted yet. It's like the government moves a little slowly. Right. They're a process. Time. It takes time. But the good news is retail pharmacies in the near future will be able to collect controlled substances so that's two things. That's great for the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. That's great for the customer. It just is a one-stop deposit now. Mm -hmm. So that's good news. Okay, fantastic. Yes. Well, I'm going to stop you right there. But when we come back from the break, we'll talk a little bit more about the program itself. And then we'll also highlight the documentary that's coming out. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here talking to Chris Angel, the president of the Great Lakes Clean Water Organization. And before the break, we were talking about the Yellow Jug program. Um, it started here in Alpena, yes. but it's really expanded to different states. Um, how was that expansion possible? Well, that was the goal, really, from, from the beginning. We started a pilot program, but mm -hmm. the idea was to you know, spread out throughout the state right. and the Great Lakes. You know, if we were just taking care of our water in Alpena, mm -hmm. we're really missing the boat because, as everyone knows, water circulates <laughs> around the whole state. Right. We're all, we need to have a, a regional approach. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, this approach could work in other parts of the country, but our focus is the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's always been the, the program, to get it in as many locations in Michigan as possible, which we have right now about 260-some locations that's in fantastic. Michigan. It is fantastic. 
in almost every county in the state, mm -hmm. with the exception of a few in northern the northern UP. Okay. So really, people, you know, in Michigan, you're within eight miles of a lake, right. stream, or river, mm -hmm. and in most locations in Michigan, you're within 20 miles of a yellow jug, old drugs participating pharmacy. Fantastic. So yes, very convenient, and and in Illinois and Wisconsin as well, okay. and our. Board of Directors, volunteers have said, set a goal that by 2015, mm -hmm. we'd like to have the program available in all of the Great Lakes states. Yeah. So that's right. Ohio. So in two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just waiting on that controlled <laughs> substance regulation because we really right. think that's going to be something that pharmacies will want to mm -hmm. participate in. And, and that will really, really help bring this to even more communities in the Great Lakes, okay. yes. And then uh, the past quarter, you guys have collected over 9,000 prescription Yeah, a drugs. total of uh, uh, 37 and a half tons to date, yeah. uh, which is great. And that's not, it's no packaging. That's, that's pills, mm -hmm. liquid, m medications. The packaging in most cases is recycled by mm -hmm. the individual okay. or at the store level. Right. So yes, a significant amount, right? Mm -hmm. And if you picture that, that's, that's these giant trucks, you know, semi-truck, trailer trucks. That's, uh, I think, like four of them that did not end up in the Great Lakes yeah. uh, emptying uh, drugs and medications, all properly destroyed, right. so yes. And what do you think the key to your success has been? Oh, I think uh, persistence. Mm -hmm. I think the venue, the simplicity of the program, the recognizability of the program, and of course, the, the message. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this? We're doing this for the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. We, everybody in Michigan and those in the Great Lakes, you know, whether we're fishermen, mm -hmm. whether we're boaters, or wait, whether we just drink the water, we all should be concerned with this. Right. So really, people, it doesn't take a lot to convince them to do the right thing, mm -hmm. but we have to provide the, the, the venue and the program before them, which we've done, and people have really responded. Great. So yes, yeah. We all care about our water. I think more so in the Great Lakes region than poss possibly other parts of the country because we're so in tune with the mm -hmm. natural resources. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, that, that's, that's why. Okay, and so you guys have been doing advertising in the form of a documentary. Yeah, we got a, a Michigan Department of Environmental Quality grant. There's several components in that grant, and one of the components, which, which we put in as a dream, we thought, well, this would be great. If we could do a documentary uh, on this issue, there has not been a full 30-minute documentary. We've done a lot of research on it. Mm -hmm. there, there has not been one produced yet mm -hmm. on the issue of medications ending up in our water right. and what we can do to help prevent that and what the future is for that. So we did get a grant. We got a $10,000 grant from the Michigan DEQ. Uh, we got a great producer working with us. We got some great video people. We had a, uh, a station down in uh, Mount Pleasant help us with it. So the, the trailer is done. It's a five minute trailer. Mm -hmm. That's the preview. Okay. Uh, that's being shared with TV stations across Michigan right now. The goal is to, and we've already had some stations respond back very favorably, mm -hmm. that they will broadcast it October, November, okay. which they're telling us is great TV viewing time, <laughs> October, November. Right. So we're really looking forward to that. I, it will talk about the issue. We have some national experts, some Michigan experts. We have some people who are doing research on the issue. And of course, we're talking about the success of the Yellow Jug Program okay. and how a group of concerned individuals, when they see a problem, can tackle it and, and really encouraging people to participate in this program. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think just the education. Right. You know, when that's broadcast across TV stations in Michigan, mm -hmm. people are going to see that and we'll have even more participation and people doing the correct thing. Right. And is that what you hope people will take away from the documentary? Yes. And the thing I do want to stress too is, you know, um, it's an emerging issue. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not afraid to drink my water. I'm on a well. I'm not afraid to drink my water in any part of the state, any municipality you know, in Michigan. But this is a proactive thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things that, that we feel really good about doing um, because we're preventing a problem Definitely. 30 years down the road. So yes, education is important. We're pleased that so many people have responded initially, which was kind of a nice surprise, right. but even more people seeing it, sharing it with their kids, sharing it with their grandparents. Hey, do you know you should be, you know, getting rid of your stuff in your medicine cabinet? Mm -hmm. Here's how you can do it. More pharmacies involved. Right. It's great for pharmacies to be able to say, we're providing this service. Mm -hmm. And we're concerned about the environment. The customers respond to that very favorably. Mm -hmm.
Yes. And so since you guys started the program in 2009, what do you think people really didn't know about prescription drugs kind of getting rid of them? Well, two things. They, they, a lot of people, what we were seeing was that once the program was in place, that people were kind of stockpiling and holding on to stuff. Right. They didn't know what to do with it. They were afraid to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. They had sort of hurt. A lot of people were still flushing. Yes, flushing, flushing, flushing. Okay, a lot of that has stopped. But you have to have something there that they can what's the alternative? If I'm right. not flushing, if I'm supposed to clean it out properly, what is that proper disposal exactly. method? So this is a great way to do that. Um, so yes, just the education that um, if you have unused, unexpired, you should be cleaning out your medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not supposed to be trading med medications. The safety factor too. You know, um, having controlled substances in a house, Vicodin, Oxycontin that you're not using, it's not good, could fall into the wrong hands, right. whether that's through, you know, somebody just coming into your house mm -hmm. and pilfering it and you don't know about it, mm -hmm. or somebody actually, you know, like we've had in some cases, someone knocking on the door and stealing it out of someone's, get it out of your medicine cabinet. Right. And I think that's uh, the misconception of a lot of people, they just leave it in their medicine cabinet if they're not using it, oh, put it to the yes. side type of thing. exactly. And antibiotics, you're supposed to be using them all, or and people have unused antibiotics that they're yeah. saving for a future date, or if your doctor switches you out stuff, you're not going to use it a month or a year or two years down the road. You should be disposing of it. And now that you have a, a way to dispose of it properly, there's no excuse. Right. So how can people regionally participate in this program? Great. Well, number one, they could call 989-736-8179. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people like to just call. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll get me, and I can tell them where the pharmacy is closest to their their community okay. where they live or they can go to the website greatlakescleanwater.org there's a map that they can look on in the state of Michigan or in Illinois or Wisconsin all the pharmacies are there they can key in on their northeast Michigan or wherever they may be mm -hmm. in the state and uh, it will show you where the participating pharmacies are and free of charge for customers okay. the pharmacies do provide support to help us provide this program right. that's key to say they don't have to do this mm -hmm. they are providing that support while we do get some grant funding the key to our program is even if you took away all of our grant funding mm -hmm. Because we have pharmacies supporting this program, we will always be there. That's the sustainability yes. piece. Like, you know, you've heard some grant programs, they're around for two years, funding ends, okay, program ends. Mm -hmm. This is not the case with that. We planned for that. I've been involved in a lot of grant funded programs, right. so we wanted to make sure that this would continue. Great, and keep it sustained. Exactly. Fantastic. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for joining me today and Thanks for telling having me about me. your program. Yeah. All right. Well, when we come back from the break, we'll talk to a local pharmacist and get his perspective on the drug program. Welcome back from the break. Jesse Spicer now joins me from Lafay Pharmacy, and he's here to talk a little bit about how the Yellow Jug program is impacting the pharmacy. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Um, so how'd you decide to get involved in the program? Well, when I first heard of the program, it was actually from Chris Angel himself. We were both at a uh, kind of like a round table type of discussion mm -hmm. at one of the local uh, assisted living areas for the elderly and he was talking about the Yellow Jug program and I thought it was a pretty good idea because people have no idea as to what to do with expired medication and things like that. And that's when I first heard about it. Uh, we were doing a, a immunization clinic and uh, he was there so uh, that's when I first heard about it. Okay great and prior to hearing about this program how were you seeing patients um, discard of their unused prescription drugs? Well a lot of people just hang on to them. Mm -hmm. I would see prescription bottles that would be 20, 30 years old. Oh, wow. um, and most people that asked, uh, you know, they were throwing it away in the garbage or flushing them down the toilet or putting them down the sink, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, which is not the best means mm -hmm. of getting rid of uh, prescription meds. Right. And why don't we want people to kind of flush them down the toilet to discard of them? Well, eventually, it's going to go into some sort of a leach pit or, you know, to the water treatment plant. And it's, you know, prescription drugs, while they have a simple name or a catchy name to try to, you know, get you to remember them, they are very complex molecules. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also the inactive ingredients that go along 
with the active ingredients. So, you know, eventually they can get into the groundwater supply, mm. which means, you know, trace amounts could get into your system and cause a problem potentially. So uh, that's the problem with traditional disposal of medication. Mm -hmm. And when did you guys start using the Yellow Jug program? Well, it wasn't too long after Chris came out with the program that we were participating in it. Uh, I'm not sure of the year. Um, it was probably about five years ago, right okay. at the beginning of the program. Right. Um, we started with it and it's been very successful mm -hmm. for us um, as well as I'm sure other pharmacies that have it in uh, Alpena area. Um, and it has spread quite a lot. I've you know watched over the years how far it's spread and it's a good program. Right, definitely. So how have you seen the kind of turnout of the program here at your pharmacy? Well, it's grown quite a bit. Uh, we were, at least I haven't heard a report lately, we were one of the leading pharmacies as far as disposal of medication mm -hmm. uh, in the area, uh, as well as the state. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been very successful and it has grown, especially in our area. and of course around the state also. Right, and um, what have you been telling your patients that come into the pharmacy for their prescription drugs about this program? Is it kind of something that they just see and recognize or is it something that you guys really try to promote? It pretty much promotes itself. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been advertisements on TV that I've noticed, um, but people are aware of it uh, and we get phone calls about it a lot, you know, as to if we have the program okay. uh, or what to do with their medications in which we suggest it because it's the only means as of right now that we have for disposal of expired medication. So um, it pretty much promotes itself overall. Okay. Um, and so when people come in to turn in their prescription drugs, yeah, Chris kind of explained it to us. It's just really simple. They just have to dump it in the yellow jug. Mm -hmm. Is that what the case has been? Yep, we assist them sometimes, especially if they have a lot of medication, which some people do. Uh, they'll bring in a, a large sack of uh, old medication. We, of course, we have to verify what the drugs are, make sure that there's no controlled substances or narcotics that are in there um, because we can't dispose of those. Uh, that law is hopefully going to change mm -hmm. within the mm -hmm. next year or two to where we can dispose of those or there'll be some other program uh, set up that, to allow the disposal of that. As of right now, we uh, send people to the state police post mm -hmm. uh, for disposal of controlled substances. But right. we verify the medication and uh, we assist them if they need assistance. Other than that, they help themselves to it once we verified it and that's it. Okay. Um, and going back to typically people, like you said, kind of you put their old drugs, prescription drugs to the side in the medicine cabinet and don't really discard of them. Um, why is it so important to discard of these and not only to um, discard of them, but not keep their old prescription drugs and maybe think that they can use it um, and the next go around when they get sick? That's exactly it. Uh, expired medication can be dangerous. Uh, worst case scenario is that the medication degrades enough to where, number one, if it's a serious uh, health problem, mm. that it won't work. Mm -hmm. uh, or that, you know, worst case scenario, that it could degrade enough to where it could oxidize to something else, which could be potentially harmful. Okay. Um, those are the things that you want to avoid. Mm. Um, you don't want to have those medications just sitting around just for that specific reason. Uh, that it could be potentially hazardous to your own health. Right, definitely. Um, and so in talking to people that come in and out of the pharmacy, um, have they told you that this program has made a difference or how do they feel about it? Well, they're very open to it. Obviously, the, there's a lot of relief that there is something available now to dispose of medication versus uh, what people traditionally do. Um, so it is a good benefit to them uh, as well as ourselves because we can help them dispose of their medicine mm -hmm. um, and it's just overall sense of relief just because they can finally do something with the potential pile of medication that they have at home. Right, definitely. Um, so for people who may not be as familiar with the program um, and you being a pharmacist, what would you tell them about the program and its benefits? Well, the benefits is that they get to empty out their medicine cabinet of old expired medication or supplements or whatever they have. Um, 
medicines often get switched uh, so you know they can clear out and make it more accurate for them if mm. they're still taking medication at home to not be confused as to what they're supposed to take and when they're supposed to take it so that's a that's probably the biggest benefit okay. of the program um, so it sounds like it's a win-win for everyone not just people who turn in their prescription drugs but also keeping them away from um, polluting the environment if you will yep polluting the environment also you know if people have old uh, medications around and somebody is looking to steal them or something like mm -hmm. that not knowing trying to get illegal drugs or uh, something like that that's also a big help too is you're getting rid of that uh, even if we do have to send people to the state police post to get rid of controlled substances they are getting uh, they are getting rid of them mm -hmm. and that is extremely helpful because prescription medication is uh, abused um, and that is growing in more uh, commonplace now which is unfortunate right um, so that helps to get those types of drugs off the street also. All right, well, fantastic. Thank you, Jesse, so much for coming here on the show and mm -hmm. explaining a little bit more about the program. Thanks for having me. All right, well, that'll wrap this edition of Insides Up for now. You can catch us back here next Sunday. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News. If you have any comments, suggestions, or topics you would like to see on a future show, please email WBKB News. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation. All rights reserved.